Well, for right now, it's the homeless, many of the homeless have been going there for years. And right now in the bitter cold, they could usually, you know, have any more in the wintertime. And our thing was, this is where the homeless who have no place to go find shelter. And it's warm. It really is comfortably warm and safe. And they all have their spots. Some are in groups, some are singles, but they all have their spots. And I've been down there, and, you know, it's really very touching. Um, the first night we went, well, we went down um, and asked them what they need. The first thing we heard was blankets, were blankets, um, and socks. And we brought food, and, oh, they were so happy, water, they wanted the water. So they were so happy to get, the, to get it. And uh, when we would meet with them, you know, one, one man said to me, he was sitting on the sidewalk, and he said, would you please pray over me? And they kind of spread. So wherever we went, they wanted prayers, and when we prayed with them, they were so grateful. And a couple had tears, and when we were leaving, they said, God bless you, God bless you. And um, so when we went back, they were looking for us again, and we got, it was the same thing, you know, um, pray for us. And, and the first night we went there, one, one man came up, fellow came up to me and said, uh, so I want to come to the House of Mercy uh, because I want to get into a program. I want to change my life. And we brought him back with us. Another man down there said, you know, I want to go to my hometown um, in, up in New York. And he said, but I don't have a ticket. So he said, we'll get the ticket for you. And we brought him the ticket the other night. So he's leaving the garage. I mean, you know, it's that personal contact. And right now, there is a man there who is ill. And we're trying to get him to go to the hospital. I think he's afraid to go, and everybody's trying to get him to go. And I can't imagine them putting him out. I've never seen him standing. He's always been sitting or lying down. Uh, I have a nurse working with him now. She's going to go back this afternoon. Uh, she's afraid. He has some problem with his teeth and his mouth, and it, his uh, throat hurts. She's afraid he might have an infection. So she's going to go check with him this afternoon and try to take him to the hospital tomorrow. He's resisting, but he's got to go because he might have an infection. You know, um, so, so the garage for the people is very important because they're warm, they're comfortable, they have their space, and they don't bother anybody. It sounds I, like almost like a community. It, it is. It is a community. Um, and I think the, the problem seems to be the workers, they work for the courts or the judges, you know, and the, um, I think it's the people that... I got a phone call yesterday, and this woman was very upset with me. And, uh, but she, she turned out to be okay, but I talked with her for a long time, and she said, I'm afraid. I work there at 8 o'clock in the morning, I see them, and I leave at 5, and they're there, and she says, I'm afraid. And then she talked about, you know, the urination and all that. Well, we're trying to get them to put um, port, uh, those porta, -potty. porta potties there, and they don't want to do it, but they really should. Uh, and the men themselves, they want a clean place. If they see somebody throwing something, they'll say, wait, pick that up, you know, or clean up behind you. And they would fold their clothes, their, their blankets and things and go back there. And say, but now they're taking the, the police are taking the blankets away or the, the people who clean the garage. Um, so, so you can bring a blanket today and tomorrow it's gone. Um, but uh, they do not want to leave the garage. They want to stay there. But if there is... And one group said they want to meet with the LDC board. They want to have a meeting. They'd be glad to meet with them and let them know how they're feeling, what they're going through. And so we're trying to pull that together uh, so they could meet with the LDC members and other groups, other people in the community. Well, I was there, there because we are concerned about the fact that, uh, well, and we had heard and it was said originally that the so Civic Center garage was going to close, was going to be gated off. Uh, November 1st and we were alarmed and we were upset about it so uh, there were some meetings of um, service groups and a city rep and uh, county rep that started in April so we were going to those meetings and speaking out saying look you can't just put the homeless out in the streets you know we need to find a building a suitable building in the city where they could be, go and be ta well taken care of and get be out of the cold and fed and all that and we got no place. We were meeting since uh, April. And, and this was with county or the LDC? Uh, no, the LDC was not involved at this point. It was uh, Carol Wheeler from the city 
and uh, Rebecca Migliorati from the county, and, and there were other homeless groups and service groups that were there. And it was a large group, uh, but we, were get, we weren't getting any place. And so finally we, we said, look, let's find a building, let's find one now. Um, and they were saying, well, it was getting closer to November 1st. We said, well, let's get a temporary one now until we can get a permanent one. So we went out looking for uh, uh, buildings, and every time we came back with a building, it was shot down. Uh, There's always something wrong with it, or it wasn't the the area, the house wasn't zoned, you know, uh, correctly. So then we thought, wait a minute, this has gone long enough. It went, and um, but November first passed, so we thought, well, we probably were successful in keeping them from closing the garage November first. So. Then we, um, we heard about the, uh, we, we had a meeting with the, own, with, uh, the LDC in Monroe County, and they're over the garage, and, um, and Rick Goldstein, who runs the, manages the garage from MAPCO, and we had a, we, we, I called them and asked if we could meet with them to stop the closing entirely, because we didn't know what was going to be happening. So we had a meeting, and he was there, and there were reps uh, from, um, Bell was there from the, um, LDC and um, uh, associate for the judge, and there were some other workers there, and we and some of us, and we said, please don't close the garage until we find a building. And they were listening, but the upshot at the end was Rick Goldstein, who manages the garage uh, from Epco. He says he ended up with January 15th, the garage will close. And so we tried to, to to change it, and of course nothing. So we decided we needed to do something, and we thought we've got the public didn't really know. We knew, but the public didn't know, and we thought the public needs to know what's going on. So that's when we called the press, and um, got some some uh, community organizations together, and said, let's call the press and have a press conference. And um, so. We, we uh, were working to stop the January 15th closing, and the closer I got to January 15th, the more nervous we were getting. So then the frigid uh, weather cag arrived, which was very timely. And uh, so those really cold nights, some of us went down to the garage. And, uh, you know, the people were just, they were really great. They were so glad to see us, and as they see other people. And they, uh, they, uh, um, we prayed with them, talked with them, and gave them food and socks. Oh, they really need socks. And we brought blankets, and they had blankets. But then when they would clean the garage the next day, they, the cleaners would remove all the blankets and sleeping bags, and so you have to start all over again. Um, so then um, we decided we better bring in the city because we want them to change the ordinance because you know how they have the center city signs all around and they're not allowing a homeless shelter in that area. So we want the city to change the ordinance. When, since when is, or has this been an ongoing thing or is this something that's changed as far as not having a shelter in center city? Uh, I don't think they ever planned to have one. Uh, and there are some in other cities. And we thought, well, Rochester's the only one that doesn't have one. But I think what they're thinking is, well, there are shelters. And the shelters can accommodate all the homeless. But there are rules, and the rules keep many homeless out. And many homeless have uh, mental issues that, you know, they're not ever going to fit into a system. They're not going to go into a shelter that says, well, you have to be in by 6 o'clock tonight, and you can't leave until, but you have to leave tomorrow morning. Uh, they're not going to fall into that kind of a regime, and everybody knows that. There are some that will go into shelters, or will, uh, we're thinking like housing first, getting people into housing, and we've been successful. The people we took from the railroad track, um, we got them into a house and apartment, and they love it. And they're getting SSI, food stamps, Medicaid, and they, they don't want to move out. You know, once they get an income, they start paying rent. You know, so they're living like others and they're happy and content. That's what we want to do with the homeless, find places where they can live. And um, those pictures there show the before and after of some of the homeless people that we got took from the garage. Um, and we didn't say anything to them. About what, they, we just, what they had to do, we just said, here, come here and live here. You're off, you're off the street, you're out of the cold. And believe me, the transformation, without a word from us, the transformation. We got them on, on food stamps, Medicaid, 
and uh, SSI, and they're paying rent, and they're happy. So it can happen. And then there's uh, South Avenue across from St. Joe's House of Hospitality. That's another, another one. So anyways, we thought we've got to do something before January 15th. It was getting too close. And that's when some of us got together and says, okay, let's call the press. We need publicity. And, oh, the press came. It was just wonderful the way the press, you know, showed up. And we said uh, that when we had the meeting at the Civic Center garage with um, Goldstein and some of the reps, they said they were having a meeting January 7th. It was an LDC board meeting, and anybody could go to it. It was 9.30 in the morning, and you didn't have to sign up. And we said, well, we'll be there. So we're all gearing up, and I call it, we got the press, and all gearing up for January 7th. So we got there, and our people came. Our people wanted to fight for the homeless, um, and we had quite a few there. On, on two, there was that frigid, frigid day, you know. There was a terrible day. Yeah, so we were there at the Watts building, and so uh, we all went inside, and uh, then the press came, and, you know, and our people were photographed, and but we found out there was no meaning. We thought, oh, this is very interesting, because we were told it was January 7th at 9.30. And I thought, well, um, they probably don't want to meet with us. Uh, and there was a security guard there, and he checked the, his sheet, and he said, no, there's no meeting of the LDC board today. He said, but there is one Thursday. And we said, well, what time? He said, 9. So we thought, well, he said, well, they tell us to be here at 9. but. We thought, we don't want to miss any chances here. And then today when I picked up the newspaper, it said 10. So what is it, 9.30, 9, 10? So we just thought, we'll all go down there together again. And of course, we called people, asked them to come and speak. And uh, so that's why you had quite a few speakers. We have 14 speakers, which is really good. And everybody, you know, pleaded, don't close the garage until we can find a suitable building for them. And, I've heard, I've heard there have been, and I'm sure there have been some, but our, I have not seen any, and I go to the garage quite a bit, I've never seen anything. Um, but, but our contention is, if there is a problem, deal with that person. But don't punish all the homeless because one person might be, you know, frightening someone or starting a fight or whatever it might be. Because some of them have mental issues, and it's the mental issues that need to be dealt with. We have many people who are mentally ill. Can we get help for them? No. No. So they're still here. I'm not going to put them out because nobody wants them. And so you have some of them are there. You look at them. They don't even know what you're saying to them. And yet you want to put that person, that's the very person who will go out and be in the cold and be found dead, you know, frozen to death. You know, we don't want to see that kind of thing happen. We were asking, keep the garage open until we can look at the city and the county and other people, to, the community, to work with us to get a building in the city where the people that frequent the, or live in the, in the uh, garage can go freely like they go in and out of the garage. And, uh, you know, we would help staff it and make sure the services were there. And, uh, but it, we'd ha you'd have to relax the rules there. It can't be you've got to be in at 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, they have to be free to come and go like they do in the garage. Um, and they need that kind of freedom because once you start cycling them, they're not going to. That's why they don't go into some shelters because the rules really keep them out. Uh, and some people just can't live with those rules. If they've lived on the street for years, they're free spirits. And they can't just suddenly... Um, go into a structured place. But there are some people that will go into housing that really want housing. They want their own place. And we have to help them find, we have to help them to find a place. Uh, and that's what we're asking the city, the county, the community to do. Help us find a place for the homeless so they're not out in the streets. And that's what they want. Well, you know, there is this, uh, welfare has this um, after hours program where any homeless person could call a number and they should be placed in a hotel or a homeless shelter. If that person has applied for welfare and was sanctioned, that person will not be helped by welfare. So you have something that's available, but not available, uh, because 
they're not going to be helped. And sanctions could be 45 days, 90 days, 120 days, which means during that whole time period, a person has no income, no place to live, no medical insurance. And so where are they? They're homeless. And yet if, uh, and then also the rules of welfare rules and regulations, you know, uh, really are inhibit some people from getting the help they need. Be oh. very degrading, very degrading. How many people come in here and say, um, you know, I went to welfare and I didn't get the help I need, would you help me? Uh, and many of our people are really SSI eligible, uh, but they don't know that. They don't know how to get through that system. Um, and they don't know that if they're denied the first time, they can appeal and try again. Many of the people can't read or write. They don't understand the language. And they're, they're frightened. You know, I think what they really look for um, is kindness, compassion. Because, you know, they want that. They want justice, too. And so do we. We want justice for our homeless. You know, I'm, I gave a quote today. You know, um, I was reading this book on the homeless. And this one, um, the letter that this homeless person wrote, he says, you know, the, the streets are cold. Sometimes the streets are cold, but not as cold as human beings. And that struck me. And it is so, uh, in the dead winter, in freezing temperatures, you're talking about closing the civic center garage to the homeless. It's cold outside. And the question is, how cold are your hearts? or how warm are your hearts, you know, and that, that statement just stays with me, you know, uh, the streets are cold, but not as cold as humans.